Well, it went in neutral, but there's no key, so the string will, doesn't turn. And it's locked tight. Now what I'm going to have to do on this one here, since it doesn't steer, is jiggle it in and out of park, or in and out of neutral, whichever way you want to say it. That way it'll go straight for a minute, and put it in park so it'll turn sideways. Actually, I may just have to leave it in the park. There we go. Keep it going. It's trying. Yeah, I guess this is working out pretty good. I just left it in the park. And it's pulling itself straight. It's working out good. And good morning. I'm here at the main yard. I'm grabbing a set of wheels right here. I gotta throw those in the truck and I gotta take those out to my place. I got a bunch of people coming out today. I've actually already got several people there. Uh, I had told all of them I would be there at 8.30 and it's eight o'clock right now. I said, I'll be there at 8.30. I gotta do something else first thing in the morning. And they all showed up at eight and now they're all calling me wanting to know where I'm at as if they thought I was gonna change my plans and get there early or something. <laughs> I don't know, but I guess they're all waiting on me. So I'm gonna grab these and get over there.
1963 Ford Fairlane. Fairlane 500. She's rusty deluxe. The floors are completely gone in it. The uh, fenders have a little bit of rust. Quarter panels are completely rusted out. Definitely not a fixable car. Not reasonably fixable anyway. But it's got a cool looking trunk on it with the little miniature fins. The back bumper's kind of mangled on it, but uh, I think that'd still make a pretty cool couch piece. The guy cut it off up there and did some rearranging on it. Of course, I don't do that sort of work. I just cut it off and sell it to somebody else who does that sort of work. Everybody always asks me to see pictures of it when it's done, but very rarely do I ever see the finished product. It's just not something I get to see. And it's got a pretty good looking nose on it as well that'll sell. Once again, the front bumper's kind of janky, but it's got a six cylinder under the hood. I believe it still turns. I haven't messed with it too much. And then it's got a bunch of good dash parts in it. So yeah, there's a few good parts I can sell off of it. Cut the rest of it up for art. And uh, I'm not sure what rear ends under it. If it's something decent, I'll save that. And then we'll go ahead and scrap the rest of it. But right now it's way too hot for any of that. I'm just gonna let it sit here. I'll move it back in the rows later. We've got a bunch more work to get done yet. I was getting ready to strap all this together, but actually they're here to get the dumpster. So I'm gonna run out there and film loading that up. And then we'll come back in here. They're coming to get this Jeep tonight, this Willys. Not the guy that bought it, but some relation to his is actually from here in Kansas. So he came out this morning, pulled the wheels off, took them down and got some tires put on them that hold air. That way he can get it loaded up easier. And then I had the guy here to get the Mercedes. While he was here, he ended up buying this truck from me. I was gonna do a will it start on this truck here just because it looks halfway decent. It's kind of rusty, but it's all there, you know. And it just it just looks good sitting here. And uh, he saw it and we popped the hood and it actually has a 400 under the hood. And it looks like there's a wire that's messed up. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal to get it started. So he just went ahead and bought it from me. So I guess I'm not gonna bother starting it. I'll find another vehicle someday to do a, a will it start. I've never had a successful will it start video and that's just something I, I kind of want to do at least one. Okay, he's gone. I got a guy on the way now to pick some more stuff up, small stuff. I've got to get this old Chevy truck hood panel out of here. This is all stuff that came from the airplane auction. Uh, this truck, everything in the back of it, clear full of airplane parts. But I also bought this panel here. He saw it in the video. He emailed me and sent me the money on it. He's on his way now to pick that up as well as something else, which I got to go find. It's a pretty cool old piece. I almost didn't buy this. I thought, well, I don't know, it's kind of big. I don't really want to ship it, but uh, I'm glad I did now because I didn't have to ship it. He's coming to pick it up. Probably Monday, I don't feel like doing it today. It's just too hot. I've got to get this truck completely cleaned out and then I've got to get the cab and front clip and the bumper lifted off of the frame because I have all of that sold and he's coming to get that here pretty soon. I need to get the back of it cleaned out as well, but uh, I just honestly, I don't have the energy to do all of that. So I'm probably just gonna go ahead and pop the bed off of it. That way I can just set the whole bed off to the side and then the frame of the truck is just junk so I can put it in the crusher pile. It's somewhere in here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, right here. The guys that bought the truck hood is wanting to buy this as well. It's an old uh, railroad traffic light. Somebody's taken the glass lenses out and put plastic ones in it, but it's still a pretty cool piece. Okay, now I'm gonna strap this all down. I've gotta strap this cab to the frame with two straps and I think I can get by with about four straps on this back here. If I have to put two more on it, I will. I'm gonna lose the straps because this is going to the United Kingdom. So I just went to Harbor Freight and bought a couple packs of cheap, small straps. These straps are good quality. They don't really rip or tear like that as long as you don't use them over and over again. But since I'm only gonna be using these one time and they'll probably never get used again, they'll be perfect. No reason to use high dollar straps. Plus on top of that, this just has to make it to Texas on a flatbed. And once it gets to Texas, they're gonna repackage everything into an export container and they'll secure it down in there a little bit better. All right, I'm done moving stuff around for the day. I'm not gonna pull those cabs off until probably Monday, like I was saying earlier. But let's check out this old truck here. Now, I guess before we start checking it out too much, I need to explain what this is because you're probably looking at this saying, what in the world is that? What this is, is this is an old airport fuel truck and it didn't have a cab on it. They were made that way. And so it was just the cowl right here, the front clip, and then they had the tank for the fuel on the back of it. And they would use them at the airports. They were always parked inside a building, so they didn't need a cab. And that way it was easy access to jump in and out of it. I believe this particular one here was owned by Cessna because it has a bunch of Cessna stickers inside it. Uh, the guy worked at Cessna. When they retired the vehicle, he took it home and was using it for a weed sprayer. However, 
when you're out pumping fuel, you stick the nozzle in the aircraft or whatever, and so the fuel's all contained. When you're weed spraying, it's out in the open, it's spraying everywhere, so they built a little cab on it, that way they wouldn't get sprayed with all the pesticides or whatever they were spraying. Then he was cleaning up his farm, the guy that bought all the scrap on the farm bought this as well, and I saw he posted it on Facebook, and I said, man, I gotta have that, how much? And we worked out a price, and he brought it to me today. I like this little trunk on the back of it. That's kind of cool. Kind of looks like an old car. But we'll check it out. You can see here, it's got the Cessna logo on it. But they're pretty simple. I mean, it's just an old four-speed truck. Nothing fancy at all. Doesn't even have turn signals. It's pretty simple. One thing that's different between this and a regular truck is this little setup right here. Obviously, on a regular truck, it would have had the A-pillars right here and all that sort of stuff. All that's gone. All it has is this little hump where it comes up and meets this instead of having a windshield right here. So before it had all this on it, it just ended right here. We used to have a Dodge like this years and years ago out of the 60s. We sold it a long time ago. And then I, I have a buddy that has a Chevy version of one of these that he actually just got. And so now I have a Ford. So it's kind of cool. All the companies made them. They were a, they were kind of like a, uh, not a coach build, but you know what I mean, where a, a third party company would build these for this reason. It's an F-250. This is a 1960, I believe. Yeah, according to this grill, this is a 1960. I'm going to pop open the hood. I'm going to have to move these arms to do it, and we'll see what motor's in it. Kind of what I figured. It's got an old six cylinder in it just real plain jane trucks absolutely no options at all obviously because you don't need any options now this truck here honestly i don't think anybody will ever fix this truck up what i have seen some people do is they take them and obviously they'd want to take this cab back off of it and they take all the pump stuff off of it and then you can turn them into like a little uh like a a beachside food truck where you can put compartments in here put a grill in here whatever you can sell hot dogs on the beach or ice cream or that sort of stuff now I'm in Kansas we don't have beaches here or we do at some of our, our lakes but they're uh, they're not very big and they don't park trucks there but anyway somebody out of town might want this and ship it off to the coast and use it for something like that or there's all sorts of things it could be just yard art just like it is there's all sorts of things a person could do with this truck they're not very common they're pretty hard to find that have this style of cab on them or lack thereof the only bad thing about these is a lot of times these do not have VIN numbers they don't they were never titled because they were never meant for the road they don't have a lot of the legal requirements they don't have windshield wipers they don't even have a windshield to start with and like i say they don't have turn signals they don't have a lot of things on them that being said it wouldn't be hard to get a 1960 f-250 and uh use the vin information off of that to make this into a roadworthy vehicle that way this would have a vin number and also you could swap all the, the stuff over that would make this road legal i say it doesn't have a vin number some of them do so we can check real quick and see it's right here on the glove box. Oh, I can't even open the glove box because it hits right here. Let's see if I can see in there and see. Oh, I do see a tag on the glove box, riveted to the glove box. So uh, I guess this in here may actually have a VIN number. If it has a VIN number, you're good to go. You can go ahead and uh, title it. Now, it won't be road legal once again. You'd have to put windshield wipers on it. I say that you technically don't have to have windshield wipers or a windshield, but if you don't have either of those, you have to wear goggles while you drive. I actually know a guy that used to haul, haul me junk cars and he had cut the roof off of his truck and he did not have a windshield and so he wore goggles everywhere he went and that way if the police pulled him over he could show him his goggles and they would let him go sounds crazy i know but that's just the way the laws are and then turn signals those are super easy to install you can buy those on ebay and just a few wires and good to go see so yeah, what i'll have to do on this here just to see if it even has an actual vent on it is i'll probably uh, stick a camera up underneath from behind and try to get a video of the vent number the only other option would be to uh, cut stuff apart, and I don't really want to do that. So yeah, definitely an interesting piece. They put a lot of work into this cab. It's a pretty solid built cab. It's heavy steel frame with tin on it, and then they put this real thick plexiglass on it. They sealed it up good and everything. They put it in there, so yeah, they didn't want to get sprayed with whatever they were spraying the crops with, or weeds, or whatever they were spraying. You know, back in the day, farmers had Ingenuity Deluxe, and, and a lot of times they still do, but... You just don't see stuff like this getting built and used anymore. But with that, I am done here for the day. It's 106 or 107 degrees right now. I'm just, I'm completely baked. I'm done. I'll be back here on Monday. We'll get the cab knocked off of the green 47 Ford or 46, whatever it is.
All right, let's check out a bunch of the cars that I just bought in the last few days. Just got this in this morning. It's another Mitsubishi 3000 GT. This one's even worse than the last one. This one's been wrecked and they did a horrible job of fixing the front end. Uh, the wheels don't go with it. He's coming back to get those. No motor, no transmission. It's just a piece of junk. We'll figure out some sort of content for that later. I got this here. This is around a 50 model Chrysler. Somewhere, give or take a couple years. That was out in the field in eastern Kansas. He had that as well as that DeSoto. The DeSoto's out back. We'll check it out in a minute. This car is really rough, but I figured I'm just going to cut the nose off of it and then maybe part the rest out and then scrap what's left over. Just got all this this morning. I was going to just scrap it, but I thought, you know, there might be a use for that. It's good straight sticks. Some old stuff. I think it's dated 1953. Some pretty old stuff. Been laying out in the weeds, but still not in too terrible a condition. So I thought there might be a use for that. We'll hang on to it for now. Definitely stay tuned to the end because the vehicle I show you at the end of this video is by far the coolest vehicle of them all in my opinion anyway you guys can be the judge of that next up this is the truck i just picked up a couple days ago this is a 1948 chevy i'm thinking it's around a 6400 size i'm not really sure what the sizing was on these really early ones but as you can see it's pretty pretty nasty inside pretty dirty inside it's because it was parked in a barn and the critters built a nest in it but really it's not in that bad a condition if a guy cleans it out vacuums it out real good washes it up a little bit It'll be in much better condition. A lot of the headliner is actually still in it. And if I can open this door without burning myself, it is hot out here today and everything you touch is hot. As you can see, it's pretty nasty, but the uh, kick panels are still rock solid. I crawled underneath it earlier. The floors are still rock solid. So really, once it's cleaned up, this truck's gonna be in pretty good shape still. Yeah, it's the other cab corner has just a little bit of rust, but it's not terrible, but it's got the Fulton visor on it still. That's a pretty valuable piece. But the most valuable part about this truck is this smash hit grill guard right here. Check that out. I've never owned one of these before. I know what they are. I've seen them before. I know they're worth a lot of money, especially ones like this that are in really good condition. This is a really nice one still. And so that'll definitely sell if I take that off of there. I want to try to sell the whole truck altogether just like it sits. But uh, if nobody buys it, I'll go ahead and part it out sell that to somebody and sell the rest of the cab and the front clip to somebody but overall it's really like i say it's got a dent up here in the corner but that's nothing really but yeah this cab corner here has just a little bit of pinhole rust starting to form on it not bad at all it is a five window it's got the chrome trim around the windows and it's it's got a lot of cool stuff going for this truck so definitely a cool piece what's kind of neat to me on this truck is that this truck was originally sold in pratt kansas and that's where I picked it up at. So just kind of a neat piece of history. Here's the DeSoto that I bought. It came in with that Chrysler. Once again, it's really, really rough. Probably not quite as rough as the Chrysler, but yeah, it's, it's pretty rough. Definitely not worth fixing, but it's got a really good looking nose on it that I can cut off. I do wish it had DeSoto's head on it still. That would have been cool, but I'm sure that's been gone for a long time. But it's got a few miscellaneous dash parts in it maybe, but the uh, Chrysler, the trunk on it is really, really rough, beat up and junk, junky, but uh, this in here, I figured a guy might be able to cut the uh, trunk off of it. Oh, I forgot to show you guys that on the Chrysler, it has a three-piece rear window. Pretty cool piece. I thought I might just cut out the whole area around it. Sony might section that into something else, make a cool little hot rod. The guy that bought the BMW from me dropped this off the other day. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm probably just going to scrap it, but... I thought I might hang on to it for just a little while at least and see if I could figure out something else to do with it instead. But I can't really think of anything yet, but I haven't scrapped it yet. Like I say, I'll, I'll wait on it for a little while. Maybe an idea will pop in my head, maybe it won't. Yeah, the last week has been crazy out here. I think I've been filming off and on for the last six days or so. Shipped a lot of cars out, a lot of cars came in. I believe Dylan is coming back here in a week or two to pick up two more of these cars back here. All the ones back here behind me are all sold. I don't think I ever showed you guys this truck. This is a 1960 whatever, but it's a short bed is why I bought this truck. I mean, it's really rusty. It's pretty rough, but it is a short bed international and you just don't see those very often. So I figured I was just trading a car for it. Why not? I like this better than I like the car that I traded for it. So pretty neat piece. I did not get the cabs taken off of either of these Ford trucks. I checked the forecast. He's not going to be here until a week, actually a week and a half from today. And next week is supposed to be much cooler. These 110, 115 degree days are going to be gone. So I think I'm just going to wait to pull these cabs off until then. So definitely going to be a lot of stuff going on next week. Now, in addition to everything else that's been going on, I actually bought nine more vehicles out of a field up by Topeka. However, those will not start coming in for a couple weeks. I'm hiring another guy that has a two car hauler to haul those for me. 
and he has a wedding this weekend so he's going to start hauling those next weekend there's some pretty cool stuff there though i'm not going to be able to go up there and film them unfortunately but i will definitely show them to you guys once i get them in now it's time for the grand finale this is by far my favorite vehicle that i bought the vehicle itself isn't that exciting but what's under the hood is exciting and so i guess i'll just show it to you guys and explain it then this is a 1965 c60 lower cab forward pretty nice truck it's got a tiny bit of rust up above the windshield not bad at all pretty solid the fenders aren't all smashed in like they usually are i think this side over here has a little bit of damage right there but really not bad at all and i knew about this truck and the price on it was kind of high for what i would normally pay for one of these and i got to thinking about it and they said it had a 348 under the hood and i said you sure it's a 348 being a 65 and they said yeah well i bought a 58 gmc from the same people and it did have a 348 under the hood of it I already sold that engine, but this truck here being a 65, I thought, you know, they pretty rare for a 348 to be under the hood of one of these, unless somebody put it under there. And, I, and they said it was all original, so I thought, well, I'm gonna take a chance on this truck. So I went ahead and bought it for the high price. I figured worst case scenario, I will break even because of the 348. However, once I got the truck and I popped the hood, and I got to checking it over. You can't, I can't see the numbers right now. They're on the back side of the engine. But once I take it all apart again, I'll show you guys. But this is, in fact, a 409. You can see the dipstick tube is on this side. Now, that can be swapped around if you change the oil pan. However, this one here, the numbers on the back make it a 409. It's the original engine out of this truck. Now, the 409s that were in the trucks originally aren't quite as good as the car engines because they put a little uh, cutout, if you will, on the cylinders to give them a lower compression. So that's kind of unfortunate. But anymore, car 409s are ridiculous expensive. And so truck 409s have come up in value a ton, definitely worth more than if it was a 348. So that makes this truck well worth the money that I paid for it. I was a little bit worried. I don't like to gamble, not something I do, but I did kind of gamble on this truck here. Like I say, I knew I could at least get my money back, probably make 100 or $200 on the deal. But now that I know it's got a 409 in it, definitely gonna do better. It is a nice truck, all like it is. A guy could try to sell it whole, but honestly, I think this setup right here will sell for a little bit of money, and then that engine will sell separately. I think if I part the truck out though and pull it all apart, it's gonna bring a lot more money for me. One last cool thing about this truck is it has the factory tack in it. And I never get these factory tacks. And now I've gotten two of these trucks that have factory tacks in them within the last uh, two months, month and a half, two months, two and a half months, something like that. So that's just pretty cool. I think I've only ever had three of these total and two of them have been really recently. Yeah, as you can see, it has a little bit of rust up there, but it's not terrible. And that's pretty much par for the course on these 61 to 66 Chevy trucks. They all rust out up above the windshield. Really, really hard to find one that's not rusty there. So you can just pretty much plan on doing repair work when you buy one of these. But the bottom end of the cab is all solid, cab corners, all that good stuff. Like I say, we'll see if it sells. Terry might buy this. If it's already sold, I'll put it on the screen that it sold. But uh, otherwise, if anybody's interested, be sure to email me. I know this video is a little bit different than what I do a lot of times, with a lot of time lapses of doing different things. And that's just because it's been so hot, I can barely record. Just in the time it took me to talk about that truck right there, my camera overheated twice on me and so it took me quite a while just to film about that truck i had to keep starting and stopping so in this hot weather it's just really hard to film so if i put my gopro on a time lapse it doesn't overheat and so i can record that fairly easily everything else takes like I say right now it takes a bunch of effort but before my camera overheats again i'm going to go ahead and close this one out i hope you guys enjoyed this one let me know in the comments which vehicle that i got out of this whole video was your favorite i'd have to say my favorite personally is probably that funky ford airport tanker truck but uh my favorite as a businessman is that truck right there because that's where i'll make the most money no i'm not going to get rich off of one vehicle but i'll be able to make a little bit more on that than what i usually do and it's probably a good thing that i am going to make a little bit of money on that truck because i'm actually going to the dentist later today possibly to get a root canal and a crown put on so that's going to be i don't have a dental insurance so pretty much every bit of profit i make on that truck and then some is going to go to the dentist but i will worry about that you don't have to worry about that i'm going to let y'all go as always i hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and remember to get out there find an adventure we'll see you on the next one